And now I'd like to welcome to the podium the 11th president of the University of Guam, Dr. Thomas Christ. Buenas and half a day, todos hamsu. Thank you, Jonas, for um, playing MC. Welcome, particularly to our new uh, members, and of course, welcome to everyone. Um, I appreciate really having this assembly to start the semester, and I'm really glad to see everyone here. And thanks to you all for the very warm welcome that Patty and I have had uh, here at the University of Guam and in Guam in the region generally. Uh, we're both really happy to be here. And I'm honored to hold this position and to have succeeded Robert Underwood. Um, and Robert has really been a terrifically supportive and helpful predecessor, too. And I've been studying UOG hard for about nine months now and experiencing it firsthand for almost six. And I can say that this institution is doing extraordinarily good work and making a positive difference to countless lives in Guam, in all of Micronesia, and in the wider world. Our graduates are testimony to our success in fostering enlightenment, discovery, and service. And uh, we have a few copies of the annual report that you might have gotten from uh, November at the investiture, so we had them there. Uh, it's also available online, so you might just look. It's a nice sort of summary of where we are at the moment, a lot of the accomplishments that we've made. It's also very nice to look at. <laughs> um, and people in our community here in Guam and in the region also love this institution and feel a righteous ownership of it, even if they are not as aware as I would like them to be of the many points of excellence that UOG has developed. I think it's natural that outsiders in the community will have opinions and attitudes about UOG that lag behind the reality. I had no idea is an expression I frequently hear from people when they learn of something that we at UOG are doing, from CEDARS to WERI to SOE to MARC to ESA to CIS to Extension and Outreach to dozens of programs and courses and events that we run at this institution. Getting the word out about all the greatness of UOG is a high priority, and I think you've seen some of the fruits of that effort in stories and editorials and radio and TV segments uh, recently. I'm grateful for all of the hard work that the faculty, staff, students, administrators, um, everybody have put into making UOG what it is today. I'd like to give special thanks to our governing bodies and their leaders, the Board of Regents, and especially the past chairwoman, Betty Gale, and our new chairman, uh, Chris Felix, and also to the President's Council with special thanks to our Senior Vice President, Dr. Anita Enriquez. Uh, also to the Dean's Council, with special thanks to uh, Dr. Lee Udine, who represents the Dean's Council in the PC. Uh, to the Administrative Council, with special thanks to its Chair, Vice President Randy Wiegan. The Faculty Senate, and especially its President, Dr. Mary Cruz. The Faculty Union, and especially its President, Dr. Roseanne Jones. The Staff Council, and especially its chair, David Gogui, and the Student Government Association, and especially its president, uh, Evander de Guzman. And also to the UOG Endowment Foundation, especially the chairman of the board, who is, of course, also my predecessor, number six, <laughs> um, Dr. Wilford Leon Guerrero, as well as Mel Mendiola, uh, and now, um, and now uh, Katrina Perez. All of these important organizations and leaders have played critical roles in getting us to where we are now. The progress over the last 20 years, and especially over the last 10, is really noticeable, and particularly noticeable if you've been studying it in a concentrated sort of way, rather than experiencing it. Uh, UOG is a much different and stronger institution than it was a decade ago. As I have gotten to know the institution, it has become apparent to me that it's about time to take stock of where we have been and where we're going and to go through the healthy process of conjuring up a new plan for our next five years to guide the institution and our decisions. Shortly after I started work as your president, the Board of Regents tasked me with reporting on five key areas before the end of my first year in office. Those five areas are making connections, so my connections to uh, the institution and the, and the region, uh, marketing the institution, uh, academic reputation, completing and extending the good to great initiative, and increasing the size of the financial pie. 
Several of these items, particularly marketing, academic reputation, and increasing revenues, require multi-year plans. So what I have to produce is a, is a plan in response to this query. As the President's Council and I have worked through these items, it has become obvious that we could nest these items into a larger and more comprehensive strategic plan for the next five years, which will nicely coincide with our next WASC accreditation visit in the Phantom Nakan semester of 2024. Now also seems like a good time to initiate this process, given that our previous strategic plan was formulated in 2010 and culminated in the Good to Great program. As many of you will remember, the Good to Great program resulted in a list of 205 things to do. And we are now aiming to complete the 111 outstanding items and look ahead to the next five years. Also, the Academic Officers Council already initiated a planning process for the Academic Master Plan, so our university-wide plan can benefit from that momentum. As we figure out how to conduct this planning process, we'll be sensitive to capturing all the excellent work of Good to Great, the collaboratoriums, and the various surveys and white papers addressing university-wide issues. We'll be aiming to balance appreciation for this prior work with the need to include the many of us who have joined UOG since the last strategic planning process nine years ago. So far, I've been encouraging administrators to engage in some long-range dreaming and help to help frame the process. Based on my intensive study and my visits to many of you and uh, units uh, all around, divisions all around the university, here are a few of the things that I see so far that might form the basis for our long-range dreaming. Compared to other universities of our size and level, UOG has developed a strong research culture and grant application ability. Not only are faculty in Cedars and Marine Lab and Wary and Cedars and CIS and Nursing and Health Sciences and many other places regularly applying for and getting progressively larger and more prestigious grants, people across the university know about grants and value them, which isn't always the case at other institutions. I think our future includes grant funding well above the $100 million per year level, and we should plan for that future. Thanks to the hard work of Good to Great, we've refined our graduate programs and have a stronger system in place to build carefully and evaluate rigorously these programs to make sure that we can do them well and that we can sustain them in our relatively, with our relatively small population uh, base here in Guam and Micronesia. I think our future includes more applied and professional master's degrees as well as professional doctorates in due time. Some of our faculty are doing research work at very high levels of distinction, thanks largely to the grant writing culture that I just mentioned. And they are supporting master's students who then go on to do research PhD programs elsewhere and do very well in those. I think our future includes a select range, select range of research PhDs in areas where we in Guam have unique strengths due to our geographic and cultural situation. If we envision a future of bigger research grants, more graduate programs, applied and research doctorates, then I think we should be thinking about UOG moving from our current classification as a comprehensive master's institution under the Carnegie classification system uh, and aim for the next level up, which is the R3. It's now called the R3, Research 3 level of the research university. While one side of our attention might be focused on a future as a research university, I think we have equal energy focused on the ways UOG is an engine of transformation for the societies of Guam and of the Western Pacific. I think that this idea uh, I think of this particular idea as one focused on the word partnerships, on the idea that we at UOG seek to be the finest example of a partnership university anywhere. And this is because we can't do our work without others, 
The issues and opportunities are just too big for any one institution. So I envision partnerships with our regional colleges in Guam and the CNMI, Palau, and the Marshall Islands. Partnerships with local and regional governments, healthcare organizations, NGOs, and private companies. And partnerships all around the Pacific, extending to mainland Asia, North America, and beyond. As we begin this process, I see a kind of creative tension between the drive for a research university, on the one hand, and the drive for being a transformational engine for the communities, uh, for all of our communities, on the other hand. This kind of creative tension is one that all land-grant universities experience in one way or another. And I think of it as the creative tension inherent in the genius of the moral act of 1862 that launched the land-grant idea. Our early steps in the strategic planning process will need to be focused on these high-level, dreamy thoughts about where we all want our beloved institution to be in the coming decades. Once we have an idea of that distant future, we can make a plan to help us move in that direction over a manageable five-year period of the strategic plan. The President's Council will form a core, the core of a task force to manage this planning process with additional members from other key constituencies to ensure we're reflecting the whole university community as best we can. We plan to prepare these high-level aims for submission to the Board of Regents by our April 17th meeting. And for those of you who are experienced with strategic planning processes, what I'm talking about is of this upper level part of the plan is the traditional set of uh, vision, mission, values, and the strategic initiatives. That's kind of the upper level thing by April 17th. The specific tasks with measurable goals and due dates will then be the work of the succeeding months, culminating in a planning retreat in August so we can uh, submit the fleshed out plan to all of you, and then also uh, by the beginning of the um, Fanatsanan semester in August, and then to the Board of Regents after that. As you are no doubt aware, the hard part of any strategic plan is the execution of those specific tasks. So it's important that we figure out the direction that we all want to go in, uh, in the beginning of the process, so that we're all pulling in the same direction when it comes to achieving those specific goals and tasks. In sketching out a few of these preliminary ideas, I focused on the academic side, but it's also important to think about the administrative and operational side of the university as we imagine its distant future. We need to ask questions such as, how can we restore public investment in higher education? How can we accommodate a much larger student population in the future? How can we develop new revenue streams, new revenue streams? How can we become more agile and efficient while remaining a public university and a component of the government of Guam? To this end, last September, the President's Council formed five task uh, areas focused on operational excellence. And they were, the five of them, are the process improvement team led by uh, Romel Hidalgo, the revenue expansion team led by Anita Enriquez, the outreach and engagement team led by Norm Analista, the student experience team led by Lawrence Camacho, and the facilities and physical plant team led by Randy Wiegand. The work of these teams, along with surveys and reports from uh, recent months and also years past, will form the foundation of the operational and administrative side of our planning process. One way I think about this dreaming and planning process is that all of us tend to focus on our day-to-day, semester-to-semester, budget-to-budget uh, chores, our kind of daily work, and we're kind of down here as I, I sort of figure it. I'm there with our pen and we're just down here focused like this. And what I'm encouraging us to do is to sort of look up and not just sort of to hear, just a little bit out, but to look up and to look far out into the future and decide where do we want to go as an institution and then kind of back up and figure out the steps that we need to get there. But this kind of work really requires that we ask ourselves some big questions. And these include questions like, what is the future of Guam and all of Micronesia? 
How can UOG help the region solve its problems and realize its potential? How can UOG become a model for leading in critical areas of environmental sustainability, social justice, promotion and appreciation of diversity, support for indigenous languages and cultures, and the promotion of high character and public service? How is UOG distinctively different from other universities? And which universities do we wish to emulate? And what can we do so well that other universities call us up to figure out how we did it? So I'll conclude by asking all of you, please be visionary as we chart our future course. Please be open to new things and new ways of achieving our mission. And please commit your talents and energy to working together to make UOG the dream we dream it to be. Biba UOG.